Welcome everyone to day six or part six of Brewing with the Baron. I hope everyone had a good weekend. I slept a lot, played some video games, so it wasn't all too bad. But I was a little excited to see what was happening with the stuff that we brewed last week. And I'm very happy to say that the first two, the apple that we just put uh, straight apple juice, no other type of sweetener, and the yeast and the nutrient is actually starting to ferment right now. When you, if you could see it, you can actually see it cycling inside the tube. You're going to slowly see an air bubble pop up right here with a pomegranate. There, it's popping like, well, it's not really popping like crazy. It's starting, and that's the best part. So right now, it's probably about every two to three minutes, there's enough pressure that builds up that pushes an air bubble up. So that's always a good sign, number one, that you're seeing bubble, and also that you can see movement inside. So the yeast is going up and down. You're gonna see this one just has just a little bit of foam or froth. This one has a lot more mainly because we put some additional sugar into that one to try and make sure it got activated. So when you start seeing a good level of foam, that's pretty much at peak fermentation. This is still starting. You can see it's starting to climb up on the sides. Hopefully you can see that. And it's going, I run another 30 more seconds. working. Put that off to the side, let it keep on, and like I said, every day we'll keep on showing you how much faster or how many more is being activated. Today we're going to be talking about two different types of things. One we talked about before, which was a pineant, which is essentially a herb or a spice mead. Now, we're also going to be talking about some ways to do a little bit of cheating, okay? If you can get the full herbs and everything like that, you could have rosemary, thyme, cinnamon sticks, everything like that. What you really want to do, instead of just putting it in there and let it ferment, is you really want to get it to a boil. So, we're going to simulate it going to a boil. Now, you might see how dark this is already. I've already put all the stuff in because it takes a bit of time to prepare. So you need to get all the stuff. You need to determine whether you need to chop it up, um, put it on the boil, make sure everything is good. The most important thing here is when compared to the honey, you really want to get a good boil going through. The longer you keep it in there, the more flavor is going to come out. Now, sometimes you have to be careful on a few things. Number one, sometimes the more you boil it or uh, essentially like boiling it like a tea, is that you might get some uh, tannic acid and stuff. And we'll actually do one of these either tomorrow or the next day. What happens with that is you get a bitterness or the flavor becomes off a little bit. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you bring it up to a boil, no more than three to five minutes, take it off, and then let it sit. Now you can do different things. You put it in there and then when you're done, strain it out with a strainer. Or you can put it in like a cheesecloth bag and just stick it in there and let it sit overnight. Depends on how strong you want the flavor. Now, the other thing, the second part, 
is we're making a five gallon batch, not just the one gallon that we had before, but a five gallon batch. Now, sometimes people will be, I don't, I don't know really anyone that's allergic to honey, but sometimes trying to brew everything with honey can get pretty expensive. So what we did on this one is we're still putting in uh, one pound of honey per one gallon, but so that means there's gonna be 15 pounds of honey, but we're also going to be adding sugar to it. So I've already put the sugar into it, let it dissolve, put the whole spices in there, everything like that, filled it up pretty much about half ways. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fill the rest with honey. Now, Remember before when I used when I said that it's going to take about two, three and a half weeks. If you have a lot of sugar or a lot of honey, or you have a combination of the two, it can go five, maybe six weeks sometimes. So you got to be be prepared to just let it sit and do its job. Don't try and rush it or man, maybe I should have done this. Don't second guess yourself. Go play some more video games, write an email or two, take an online course. Hey, we all have plenty of time right now to do an online course if we want. Or get a subscription to Great Scholars or something like that, which I'm very much thinking about doing right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this boil up and then we will add the honey. Like I said before, I've already put in six pounds of sugar already in here. So this is going to be incredibly sweet. Now, the reason I did that is the fact that it's a pine nut, okay? You're going to get some very strong herbs and everything like that that's going to come out. So. One of the things I put in here to kind of balance some of it out was actually lemon juice, which is one thing I found to kind of kick down some of the harsh flavors and to blend it a little bit. And you get like a little taste of honey in the back of your throat and a few other ingredients that, well, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> so I'm gonna call this my Russian mead. And hopefully if it's half as good as it comes out, It'll be awesome. But as this is coming to a boil, I'm going to talk about what we're going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow, let me grab my hands here. We're going to be using this. Like I said, it's the plastic one with a big open. Okay? We're going to be doing a metal metal, which is specifically going to have spices or herbs and fruit. That's why it has such a big hole, so that we can easily put it in and easily take it out. And as I showed you before with the top, it has the same size diameter as the five gallon, but this is six and a half gallons. So. The reason it's six and a half gallons is specifically for a mellow mill. You put in a lot of fruit. Well, if you do that and you put it into one of these, you're only gonna get four, maybe four and a half gallons instead of the five. So they make it bigger, specifically designed to put fruit. Now, one of the things that they used to do a long time ago was when they put the fruit in, it actually allow the fruit to stay fresher longer. So instead of, hey, we gotta eat all of our fruit by November, December, we can still have some in February from the nice little vat that we created. So it also provides vitamin C, nutrients, antioxidant, antioxidants, and things like that, specifically to either the cider or the mead or the perry, whatever you wanna create. A lot of water taking a lot of time to boil. Now, again, because this is bigger, 
you're also going to get a tendency of it taking longer to start the fermenting process. I have two of these at home. One of them started in a week. The other one took two weeks. I made them the exact same day, exact same procedure. It's just the way it is. So that's why they usually say add the yeast, add the sugar, add the nutrients, and then let it be. It's like one of those things where if you watch water boil, it's going to take forever. If you're going to watch a mead finally start to ferment, or a cider, it can take a very long time. Now, one of the other things that we did last Friday, which hopefully you saw the nice little giggle fest of me and my two friends, Ellie and Alex, was that we started looking at all the different combinations of flavors. One of the things that I found is I like a good base, i.e. apples. Um, I was surprised to actually how much grapes. I actually kind of, grape juice went well with a lot of things. My friend Ellie was more in the spice, so she enjoyed pretty much everything, all spice added to it. So in her mind, it was, okay, this work, all spice works well with this, 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 and this. Hey, that's great. I went with apples, works well with vanilla, a little bit of tart cherries, and a different combination. Like I keep saying before, all of this is what you want to make. It's all personal flavor, personal taste, and hey, if you bring it someplace, give it as a gift or whatever, if they don't like it, just tell them, give it back to me, I will gladly take it off your hands. Now, one of the things that I do want to try a little later, there's a thing called lychee. Oh, I keep forgetting everything is backwards on here. I am going to ferment the crap out of this stuff. This, I think, would be freaking awesome. So, I got some. Hopefully, I got enough bottles. And I am going to ferment straight lychee. I'm also going to make sure that I put some of the fruit in, besides just the juice alone. I'm going to do with a one-gallon batch, just to make sure that it works real well. But I have a feeling that thing is going to be liquid candy. Oh, yes. Now, the other thing for tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm with the Mellow Mel. I am going to use pretty much straight sugar. No honey. So I'm going to use mostly brown sugar and regular white sugar. So I'm going to try and do a two-thirds brown sugar, one-third white sugar to see if that gives it a little bit of a caramel flavor. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the mellow mel fruit flavor itself will overpower. When you start doing this, you're going to start realizing that you can take the sweetness out. And when you start tasting it, when you taste something with that is supposed to be sweet, that's no longer sweet, it's going to play with your taste buds in your mind a little bit. So you have to realize, hey, this might... This doesn't taste good, okay? Don't throw it away. Add a little bit of white corn syrup. Add a little bit of sugar. Maybe a little bit of honey. Let it sit a little bit, mix up, try it again, and you might go, oh wow, this tastes so different. Remember, when you taste, that's why when we did the taste test on Friday, we didn't have the fermented stuff. We actually had the stuff in the actual sweet flavor. Now, we also added additional flavors on sweetness every once in a while to see how we're not just connecting just one flavor, one spice, a second spice. We're trying to blend it. And sometimes the honey and um, agave, which I found out I really like the agave sweetener, blends it. And it's something that you might not realize. But when you ferment it together, that's when the flavors combine. All right, this is starting to get up there. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the heat off and I'm going to add in the honey again. Yeah, da, 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 da. This is always the most exciting part. It's not. Most of the time it's the most mess messy part because you're going to get a, some honey spilled somewhere and then all of a sudden you're going to realize your right pants leg is sticky and you don't know why. Like I said before, when we go into one gallon containers, the or jugs, that you might want to add some cold water or do a cold bath when you put hot stuff in to try and make sure that the glass doesn't break or anything. The one nice thing is the five gallon one, you're pretty much not going to have that break unless you put straight boiling water and a lot of it very quickly into something that's already extremely cold. So that's gonna be able to work out quite well. The only bad thing is if you want to put it in there and you wanna mix it, you're now trying to lift a five gallon carboy that is really heavy to try and do a little bit of mixing. So you need to be careful. You need to make sure it's either on the ground or on a sturdy table. The last thing you need is for five gallons of all this to break or spill. Ugh, that is a mess. Now, I'm wondering how many of you that has been watching pretty much every episode, and I've seen we've had quite a number of people view it. Hopefully, you instead of just looking at it a little bit, you watch the whole thing. That would be great. Uh, you start to realize when you start creating this, you're going to create your own system. This is the way that I have been doing it, that I feel comfortable. Some people might go and they want to really sterilize everything twice. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. My, uh, one of my neighbors when I was growing up, no joke, he made two types of wine. He made dandelion wine and choke cherry wine. Oh my God, I don't know how much sugar he put in there, but strangely enough, dandelion wine actually tasted pretty good, but it was also so freaking sweet. So he would ferment it and then he would add a whole bunch of sugar at the end. Hey, more power to him, but and with everything, it's to flavor and taste. The worst, worst wine that anyone ever made when I was growing up was rhubarb. If you ever had rhubarb, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There was so much sugar in there and it was still the biggest pucker factor when you drank that thing. Oh my God. It was not enjoyable. <laughs> But she liked it, so, and she had a big garden full of rhubarb. She made so many rhubarb pies, rhubarb desserts. Literally in the fall, most of us did not want to go over to her house because you were always going to get something rhubarb. Um, choke, or crab apples, not choke, crab apples. There's a... There's a bite to a cider if you've ever had one. Those are really sour. Now, some people like to put that, I think it's malic acid in to try and make it a sour apple without having to actually make the crab apples to do it. Like I said, personal flavor. Some people would rather have all natural stuff. Some people would rather make stuff 
very quickly with stuff that they have in their house. It's not always fully fresh, and that's fine as long as you are happy with what you make. Uh, all right. Go ahead. suggestion and who knows maybe we'll give it a shot this is going to be the last week that I'm going to plan for this right now mainly because well either I get a whole bunch more fermenting equipment or we have to wait till everything ferments and that like I said is going to take anywhere between two to five weeks so it's a process. Don't worry, I'll come up with some other videos in the meantime. We might do a periodic check, like a weekly check. Hey, it's fermenting Monday. Let us see what the status is and everything like that. Or if you have any questions, it would be a great time to come up with a question and we can do a sit down and answer. Trust me, we all have plenty of time to do this. And like I said before, the two that we started with, which was just an airlock and a stopper, the yeast and the cleaning stuff, six bucks. And we got two of them that were fermenting already. Six bucks. So if you're curious about doing this, go to Amazon, go buy some stuff. Maybe you've got a local store that actually sells this stuff. Go do that. If you want to have a nice little brewing party, that's great. One of the things that I have not done because it's a bigger process with more equipment and everything, and that is brewing beer. Now, I knew someone who actually brewed beer in a used coffee pot. It worked for him, I guess. I have questions about it. <laughs> But usually it is a couple of hour process because you got to go decide what mixture you have from hops to what other types of uh, barley or rice or corn you want to actually use as your starch because the starch will ferment and then put it into a system, heat it all up. It can it can take a long time, and as I said, it takes a lot more equipment. So, now one of the things that I'm going to explain to you, we were talking about cordials last week and coming up with some flavors that we want to try. Now, here is an interesting thing. It's sort of like a cordial, but it's not as strong. Say you have a batch and you're like, oh, this is so good. I wonder what it's like if it was at 40% alcohol or anything like that. Instead of adding a rum or a vodka or anything like that, you can do what's known as a freeze distillation. Now what that means is you take that bottle, you put it in the fridge, or if it's the middle of a North Dakota winter, you just stick it outside for a day or two. Now what's going to happen is, if it's in a bottle, it could become more likely like a big slush. You take it, open it up, and you pour it through a strainer with a piece of cheesecloth on it, and you just let the stuff that was not frozen seep on through. That is going to be twice as concentrated, and you can freeze it again, freeze it again, freeze it again until you get a really strong concentrate. If you do that with a cider, the part that gets frozen is going to have a slight amount of alcohol, but not a lot. So you can just, that's like going to be half a percent, maybe up to two at the most if you don't do it right. But the part that is 
concentrated is called Applejack. If you do it with a mead, it's called Honey Jack. And you can get a really, really strong concentration. Like I said, it's not going to be at the level of a cordial, but it's going to be in the mid-level between the mead or the cider that you created and possibly a cordial. So all of a sudden you now have a new type of mixture or product. Unfortunately, I don't have any right now that I can put in a bottle. But pretty much on our last day, we'll be showing you the different types of bottles and ways to uh, cork it, essentially. I have two types of ways of doing it. I have a long neck bottle that I put a cork in, and I have bottles that have the flip top um, cap on it already. I prefer those. They're more expensive, and the problem is, is if you let people drink out of it or pass it around, you got to make sure you get it back because those things can be pretty expensive. Other ones you can do are get old wines that are uh, twist off, make sure you keep the screw caps on, put it in there, tighten it, and the ones that have the nice little old pop tops, you can actually get pop tops to put on a lot of them. So, many different ways of doing it. All right, get the last little bit. you get to the bell of the carboy. do work out pretty well. So as you can see, well, hopefully you can see, we got five gallons. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the stopper in real quick. I've already cleaned everything already. I have a tendency of doing that, so we don't waste time. And again, I'm going to let this sit 24 hours.
before I add the yeast in because it's still pretty hot. this one. All right, today was a much faster day. Uh, I wanted to try and cut down some of these. Some of these are starting to last a good 40 to 50 minutes. I'm trying to bring it down a little bit because we're doing less of the actual beginning aspect and more of the advanced and answering some questions or going and figuring out a different aspect to it. So Hopefully these will start going a little faster. Still try and keep it around 30, 35 minutes. So tomorrow might be a little longer, depends on how much I can prep to get everything into the big barrel. But since I'm not gonna have to heat up the honey, it should go much quicker. All right, thank you very much for joining me once again for Brewing with the Baron, and I hope to see you again tomorrow.